do it, right? 20% down, one day out of foreclosure, 580 credit score. But the rate's like 9%, right? It's not like before where the rates weren't conducive to the risk. So that's, so you are starting to see those come out. Um, and you're starting to see credit guidelines loosen and things like that. When it comes to the kind of the classic mortgages, you've got a conventional FHA, VA, and USDA, right? There's a million things about all of them that, you know, it, there's no need to hash out all the details, but more or less, credit score, if the loan amount's under 484, 350 here in Whatcom County, that's the maximum conventional loan limit, and the clients are well qualified, we're gonna go with a conventional loan. For someone with great credit, it's almost always gonna be the cheapest option. This is a 30 year fixed, right? It's got a 620 minimum credit score, but a lot of times we need higher credit to make it pencil out. FHA is the fallback. An FHA will go down to a 580 credit score, all right? The rates are generally the same, but the mortgage insurance is a lot higher. More or less, a simple way of putting it is the payments are higher on FHA, but it's easier to qualify for. That's like a 3.5% down. Three and a half percent down, but it goes to a higher debt to income ratio. It goes to a lower credit score, has some other flexibilities, right? So when your lender is you know, putting the deals together, what they should be doing, and what honestly most lenders, especially the good local lenders are doing, is they're trying to figure out what's the cheapest way I can do this for my clients, right? So like, okay, first conventional, that's the cheapest option. Did it work, yes or no? No, it didn't work, okay, FHA. Did it work, yes or no? No, it didn't work, okay, non-QM, right? And we're just trying to figure out, A, can we do the deal, and B, how can we do it for as cheap as possible for the client, that's, that's literally our job. So with an FHA loan, that's usually the fallback. But FHA's loan limit here in Whatcom County is, I think, ooh. What is it, Nicole? I just saw it. Three eighty one eight hundred. All right. So it's not as high of a, of a loan limit. Sort of almost the best loan out there, in my opinion, is a VA loan. A VA loan is zero down. It's easier to qualify for. It doesn't have monthly mortgage insurance. The rates are great, but you have to be an eligible veteran, right? So I think, in my perspective, I'm always asking people, I think as realtors it makes sense to ask someone if they're a veteran as well. And if they say yes, what's the first thing you say? Thank you. Thank you for your service. Always, always gotta be the first thing you say. Do you remember those few people were veterans in our first time homebuyers class, right? Yeah. yeah. And they're talking about VA loans. You said exactly what you said. Thank you for your service. And it's, yeah. it's the right thing to say. I mean, it's it's amazing what these, these guys go through. and uh, yeah, It's amazing how under-recognized awesome they are. Yeah. You got the VA loan, the GI Bill. Another loan option is a USDA loan. A USDA loan is a zero down loan. It's a great like hypothetical loan but the box is super small on it. So first of all, it has area limitations. A lot of Whatcom County or Skagit County isn't even eligible, just the physical addresses. And then it has some pretty tight income limitations. And then on top of that, it has super tight debt to income ratio limitations. This is something we used to do all sorts of USDA loans, but when the Washington State Housing Finance Commission came out and created the down payment assistance loans, it kind of just knocked those out. like. Because they're they're just they're really they're hard to do and a lot of them don't end up qualifying after a lot of work. So the USD loan is a great product if someone can qualify. And then what a lot of our first time home buyers are doing for zero down is the Washington State Housing Finance Commission. Have, has anyone had dealt with one of these, the down payment assistance loans? Yeah. Really? <coughs> we should. We I bet in this town there's probably sixty of them done a month. So you know, we, we usually do 10 to 12 a quarter on our team. What the Washington State Housing Finance Commission loan is, is it's, it's a conventional or an FHA first mortgage. Uh, so it's a 3% down conventional or 3.5% down FHA. But the state will actually cover the down payment. All right? So the state puts a second mortgage behind it, more or less, to cover the down payment. And that second mortgage doesn't have any interest. It doesn't have any payment, and it's due when you refinance, sell, or in 30 years. Sounds great. I mean, why wouldn't anyone do it? 
Well, you know, Tan Staffel right there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> um, that money doesn't come from nowhere, that 4% that the state's putting down, those funds. So what they're doing is they're actually charging you a higher interest rate in order to cover that. Like, do you remember when I did, used the example of at one rate I could close a loan at 100000 and close, and sell it for 103000 mm -hmm. Okay, well, if what they're doing is they're saying, well, at a higher rate, we can close it for 100000 and sell it for 110000 right? And then we'll give you 4000 of that back to help you with your down payment. That's how those Washington State Housing Finance Commission loans work. So they're actually a self-funded program. It's not a taxpayer-funded program. The loan funds itself. They charge a higher rate and cover the down payment that way. In order to do that, they have to go to the first-time home buyers class, not the white glove workshop, but the actual like six-hour, real deal. <laughs> it's it's horrible. I, that was the last first-time home buyers class I did before I did one with you guys because I was like, I'm never doing this again. This is just it's a lot. It is a long process. They can also do it online now. There's a $75 class where they can do it online. But it still takes about six hours. And you literally cannot even lock that loan in until you've completed that class because you get a course certificate number when you're done. So that, that's a great option. I mean, I think the biggest thing is, you know, coming in and then sort of the fever pitch of the 90s and the 2000s and then back to where credit was really hard to qualify for. What we're seeing is we're seeing credit ease off. We're opening up, you know, 580 credit scores, FHA and VA, and we're doing a lot of them. We're opening up, you know, the manufactured homes, which seven years ago were basically impossible to finance. You know, condos are getting easier to finance. Everything's getting a little bit easier, but it's still balanced. The QM and the non-QM, the qualified mortgage, which the government's willing to take the risk on, it gives everyone the comfort to ease the credit guidelines, but also not do it in a way that's reckless. Or when they do, they know, hey, it's me on the risk, right? So they're charging a, a rate that's commensurate with that risk. So I think it's a good time to be in lending. I think it's a good time to be in real estate. I think we'll see more zero down loan options coming out. And I think honestly, people need them, right? Like, why would someone pay a higher rate in order to put zero down? Why not save the 3%? That's what I get all the time. And the answer is because well, I can't guarantee what the market's going to do long term, but I can tell you last year, the year before, the year before, and probably this year, the market will move up faster than you can save, right? Mm -hmm. Like you could, you could buy that house with zero down and then wait a year and then have 10% equity and then refinance out of that loan back into a lower rate. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of options, right? So many people want to save in order to buy instead of taking the disfavorable terms, but I can tell you taking a half percent higher interest rate versus waiting until that house is $40,000 more, it makes a lot of sense to take the higher interest rate now and then if, if it's possible later on, get that rate low. Like, that's, that's the thing about rates. If you take that rate, five point, I think it's 5.125 right now for an FHA on that product today, because I just pre-approved one. Whereas a normal FHA is more like four and a quarter. Right? Here's the thing. If you buy that house at 5.125, if the rates go down, you can refinance. And if the rates go up, you can brag to all your friends about how great your rate is. If you don't do anything, you are completely just keeping yourself as a victim of what the market does. Because there's a really good chance that the prices go up and the rates go up. Right? At least lock into something. If nothing else, lock into a price and a rate today. That's I. I think that's so true, and we really have to impress that upon our people. So I, I really like that line. You know. All right, questions, thoughts, considerations. That was a great line. I'm going to use that. I know. Save that one. Yeah. Write down the number. 